the Dead Horse Podcast. Uh, this is Dejus and me are Vivek. Hey guys. And Arvind. Hello. And before we begin this podcast, I think we want to take at least five minutes for Arvind to tell us about his Wasteland 2 team. <laughs> okay, so so usually when I like have like team-based RPGs or or uh, I try to make them like with a real world gimmick, you know, to keep things interesting. Uh, with single person RPGs, I also do the same thing, but like it's usually like me trying to play a play as a weird character. But in this case, what I did was like I thought, you know, why not like since it's a four man team, why not try to like make it Shole themed, you know, Shole like very famous movie. Like if you haven't heard of it, then like I assume you're not from India because there's no chance like an, a person in India hasn't heard of Shole. So, so but yeah, look it up en.wikipedia.org slash Shole and okay so the four members are like one of them is Thakur like in he doesn't have he doesn't have any arms but like he has to have arms because Wasteland 2 doesn't allow like true role playing snar snar and <laughs> so, so what I did was I gave him no combat skills uh, just made him like a charisma leadership kind of character the closest I could think of to like I'd be Thakur in the movie. So, so the guy basically, uh, one thing that kind of saves the character is that if you have high leadership, you can uh, kind of, uh, like you give aim bonuses to everyone around you. So he basically makes everyone around the, himself slightly like aim better. So that kind of like, uh, headset. Though eventually, like, I think I might have to put some points in combat anyway because, like, towards the... I'm currently in mid-game. And the combat is kind of, like, getting to the point where, like, I can't afford to have one character who's just, you know, total dead weight. So, but I'll I'll try to run with it as, as far as I can. Well, you uh, should make then, Thakur in martial arts, right? Like, he kicks really well in the end. <laughs> <laughs> that actually <laughs> might work, like... Oh yes, yeah, I can put all my points in unarmed combat. Get it? Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I feel horrible for actually starting this discussion right now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's Tucker, like uh, my new unarmed combat specialist. And meanwhile, the second character is uh, Viru. So Viru, I thought, like, like, he's more of a, like, I guess like a brawler kind of character, but I gave him like, uh, what do you call, it? like a bladed weapons thing. Because brawling, like a, like from, from the earlier run I had, which you know, disposable party run, just to see what everything was, like brawling doesn't really, isn't very effective. Because the weapons you get don't have much, uh, what do you say, uh, they don't have much damage and they cost a lot of action points. miss a lot, you miss a lot if you brawl. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the main problem is, like, if you are an unarmed character, right, and, like, you spend half your action points running to the person, and then one attack, and then your action points are over. But nobody's going to die in one attack. So the next turn, they have an easy shot at you, because you are standing right next to them. So I think this is one part where, like, it isn't balanced. Like, most of the raiders will have either, like, assault rifles or, like, pistols or shotguns. Like going next to a shotgun guy and like just standing there after one punch might as well as you might as well as just like you know dig a grave for yourself with the shovel with the shovel instead of like trying to do the combat thing so yeah but so even though like i ran with this guy with like bladed weapons and high strength and everything but i i'm kind of regretting this character build like i would have chosen heavy weapons because like this guy since he's the pack mule he has the highest carry capacity He's carrying like a laser cannon and a heavy machine gun and all those awesome weapons which nobody has the skills for, you know. But like he can't actually use them. So so this is the character which I'm sort of regretting like setting up. Uh, then the third character is Basanti. But like, like her skill set was the hardest to actually represent in game. So like the, I chose basically like high intelligence and animal whisperer. So I can like have animals follow me around like and give me bonuses. So that's like sort of works, I guess. Like, not really. 
but but whatever like well, like it's a shame like um, and apart from that i gave us shotguns because shotguns are very useful to have like they are the only weapons who can attack like more than one enemy in one shot if you are like if the cone uh, of fire is right so sh- so having a shotgun in the team is pretty much like pretty useful and then the fourth character is jay who's like your uh, medium ranged uh, assault rifle guy who just like sort of hangs back it's everyone and like he has uh, like lock picking and like alarms and all that stuff so yeah like that's my team as of now and yeah like okay. it's they're, they're doing well like i have a lot of like observations and like criticisms of wasteland 2 but yeah we'll get to that once like you guys have so yeah that's my wasteland 2 team okay uh I I still can't believe you actually did that cuz like um I I think we need to attach this to the podcast where we put that uh to the image that uh, Arvind uploaded a while back with all the <laughs> faces cuz that that needs to be part of this now just so that you know any Shole fans out there kind of get it um uh <laughs> next then uh moving on uh what do you guys think of the whole uh Notch and Minecraft buyout <laughs> okay, I think we can end it with that side. Moving on. No, I mean like no, sorry, I was actually going to say something, but yeah. <laughs> I think it's good for Notch like because like you know 2.5 billion anyone who who says that, that you know like they won't sell like the company like assuming like that person isn't worth like 2 billion or something in that case maybe they won't. But like anyone like us who said they won't sell out is clearly lying because to hell I would and like it's not not just even losing all that much like i mean for him at least like he had clearly like stopped working on minecraft for a long time and that didn't really have the same appeal for him so for him it's a it's a great way to like start fresh and meanwhile like like I, he probably like made his like there were there were definitely other companies who were in for this so he made the best decision what he think and i mean like you know like Microsoft have a history of like even though Microsoft up uh, like the studios they acquire but then also like EA also does that so it's not like uh like that's a unique trait and yeah like it's good for him like Notch will definitely get like he doesn't lose anything he'll still get next title people are still excited about what he's doing so, and like he can take a sabbatical easily like he can probably vacation for the next 500 years straight <laughs> so so yeah like no no say so yeah, i think i'm just like i'm just sort of uh, anxious about what the future of minecraft will be because my microsoft you know doesn't really care about pc gaming and like their first step will probably be to add games for windows live on minecraft so so yeah i don't know what like what the next thing would be But yeah, so, from Microsoft. Uh, no, go ahead. Yeah, I like. I don't know that I have any problem with him selling, uh, uh, selling Minecraft or selling Mojang to Microsoft. Whatever, that's that's fine. That's his decision. He owns the company. Uh, my like, I think the only thing that made me a little bit sad was, uh, like, this guy has been driven to the point where he is not, he does not want to work on anything successful ever again. Like. that's kind of sad because he like he's clearly capable of producing amazing things mm-hmm. uh and uh, like if i don't I, i don't know that is necessarily our industry i think it's just the age in which everyone we live like ev- everyone who is connected to the internet is exposed to this avalanche of information 24/7 uh and i like i don't think we're built to deal with it right now you know maybe the generation yeah. is growing with it will be able to deal with it a lot better than we are but we are not built we are not equipped to deal with uh, yeah. the the just the sheer volume of information that we uh, that we yeah, this like this is actually yeah another thing about you know internet fan base is like notch like like he received like absurd amounts of like vitriol for basic stuff like if he, like 
due to the nature of open development like which we'll also like yeah touch upon in our next topic but like any decision he made so for example if one day he would tweet something like okay i want to add this thing to it like and the next day he would be like hmm that's not panning out as as i want to have i'll add this thing instead uh, so like the, the sheer amount of vitriol like, that he would get would would, would was insane like and like people like i don't know like how pe- like the people who like do this sort of stuff where do they get the time what do what like what's their job what are they doing i don't know but like it, it was insane like dude would would say something and they like, would get like 500 responses just like telling him that you know fuck off and he was the worst thing to happen etc so yeah like that that with that is going to take a toll upon anybody and like i'm surprised he sort of lasted this long but but it's sad like the the kind of fan bases that are like you know popping up around uh, like due to the open nature of the internet that actually like that is the worst argument against like this like the easy like because like 20 years ago for example everyone was like like all the quote and quote celebrities would live in their own bubble you know no real interaction with people no like no fans like a fan would probably just like go to an autograph see that's like, a, that's a, that is yeah. that's a really weird thing because i think in the case of triple a what you're saying is still true like huge triple a developers to a large extent are still pretty well insulated from this kind of fan vitriol just because of the size of the organization that they they uh, they're in there are like three or four layers of buffer before things get to them you know what i mean uh yeah yeah that yeah that but, but indie developers are in this like successful indie developers like not even jonathan goes like, like super successful indie developers like notch mm. are under this weird kind of exposure and there's this weird situation where they're expected to be accessible 24/7 or else they're called uh like friggin snobs or whatever but at the same yeah. time they're supposed to be able to deal with it with some kind of you know non-existent grace and no one can deal with being called a moron 24/7 yeah, and exactly and i mean like i mean like you get the odd tale where you know like some customer support guy snapped you know like and like abusive and then like stole somebody to fuck off and something like that but like this is basically that multiplied by 5000 they're getting the same volume of tweets as like somebody from ea will like community like community account of ea or whatever but it, it's all focused upon them and like and the the funny thing is like what happens is like example they'll respond gracious 100 tweets then like they they'll they'll say something snarky at 500 first tweet and suddenly everyone says getting screenshot five four chan threads about how how much of an asshole notch is and how like the fame is to his head or something you know like that's the most weird part which i and this this thing like specifically happens a lot like nowadays even like there's like people are deliberately doing that where you know like like they'll post like uh, like tweets who are kind of baiting to people to get them to trip up so like immediately like a screenshot can be shared showing how much of an asshole this guy is it's very I mean, that, that's basically the yeah yeah like i think i see it's it's weird because for the person posting the tweet it's probably the first time they've ever interacted with this guy but for the guy reading yeah. the tweet like this is the 7000 thing i've read today and yeah. why are you why are you shitting on me man i'm not done anything to you i don't even know you uh yeah like and and the other the other really really bad thing about social media and it's something that i th- i found that everybody does these days is that uh everyone thinks that uh, they can start interpreting and understanding information at the rate at which they receive information and that's that's become a really bad habit with everyone wherein like you know if the minute you you read something you immediately think you understand everything about that person who's written it yeah basically like snap judgments like snap yeah, judgments it, what do you mean and yeah. it's it's snap judgment at at the rate of like lightning because this like this back and forth doesn't stop you say something then immediately you think you know everything about this person and like you're just like okay fine you're a X X X X X. I know exactly what what category in in the world you start into, which is complete nonsense. Like human beings, 
aren't something you can put into a category like that. It's weird. Anyway, I feel bad that he's been put into this position where he doesn't want to make games that people uh, people will love again. That like that really really sucks. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I want to say. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't that. think anyone will disagree, but yeah. So yeah, like I mean, yeah, like I guess the dude should just like enjoy. Like he's earned it basically. Yeah, Literally yeah. He's earned, earned it. So yeah. He's earned a long vacation uh, yeah. in in Hawaii or wherever, whatever his preferred de- destination yeah. spot is. He, he can take off, decompress for a long time, and then start working on something instead if he wants to, or if he doesn't want to, just keep taking that vacation, man. Uh, uh, he's earned. He's earned it uh, at this point. Like, yeah. Like, I think there's like at, at, at a certain level, if you have a certain kind of presence uh, as an independent developer, I think. I think they need to start figuring out how to buffer that to an extent so that the sheer volume of nonsense doesn't reach you regularly. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. I think I think there's actually money to be made there. If someone is willing to be a buffer between <laughs> the audience and certain indie game developers who, who uh, take an enormous amount of flack for uh, all not always very good reasons, uh, then I like I think I think there are people who can. Uh, benefit like both sides can benefit greatly from something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean like it's it's one thing which I like I think I don't know, like I'm not qualified enough. But I think like there's some fundamental problem with which like you know people view celebrities like quote and quote celebrities again because like Yeah. It is it's a, it's, like Yeah. It's almost it's, like it's weird kind of celebrity. property. Yeah, in some yeah. way, you know? Like it's the really, really weird kind of celebrity, especially with video games wherein you don't have any of the perks of celebrity, but you have all the pitfalls. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you don't get any of the good shit about being a celebrity if you're a games journalist. Like, you don't get the money, you don't get the, the <laughs> adulation. And, yeah, the you don't get to... Yeah, you, you don't get the influence. Yeah. Very regularly. Yeah. Yeah, you don't... Yeah, that's exactly it. Like, it's all the downfall without none of the... But yeah... <laughs> It's just yeah. Let's let's stop talking before we even get into okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> before yeah, we say something talk. really stupid, yeah. Let's yeah. let's talk talk about something else. Uh, yeah. uh space based uh, GF nine. Let's let's talk about that. GF nine. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, about that. I I was reading a while back that it's releasing earlier and that a bunch of features that they had talked about weren't being done. Uh, I don't know why though. Is it because they weren't getting enough um, uh, enough sales or enough backing to continue production, or what exactly is the story there? Uh, okay, so, so, so let me recap this stuff. So, uh, so at the start, like what was space based space based DF9? It, Double Fine had that. Uh, they have this Amnesia Fortnite thing, where yeah. where people pitch a lot of ideas and like. Double Fine were like, okay, let's make like four of our top voted ideas into games. So one of this was basically like Dwarf Fortress, but in space. Uh, yeah. Space-based GF9 was like, so, so okay, yeah, like who doesn't want Dwarf Fortress, but in space, right? So everyone naturally like voted for it. It was a po- very popular idea. So Double Fine mm-hmm. started production on it and Indie Fund gave them a bunch of money for it. Uh, okay. Then what happened was that... Uh, like initially, like it it sold a lot. Like Indie Fund said that it recouped their investment in like two weeks or something. Indie Fund and so on. So it got a okay. so like, but the build that was there in early access was was very bare bones. Like it was just like a bunch of people walking. You had like two or three features in there, and wasn't really the wasn't really a simulation. It was just a thing. But like it was being sold on all these promises. You know like. Okay, at the end it would be like Dwarf Fortress, and you'll get all this emergent behavior. Like, uh, but, but what happened was then like the realities of game development started in like early access. Like, like I was just like thinking about it. Like early access is basically uh, you promising a lot of stretch goals onto something, but nobody uh-huh. knows what the amount you need for that is. So like oh. in Kickstarter you can be like, okay, I didn't get to like. 200,000. That means any stretch goal beyond this is not in in my range. But here, oh, wow. like it was like they 
they posted all of these stretch goals and it was like yeah we'll get to them eventually and like behind mm-hmm. the scenes they were just hoping that their game gets the same amount of traction as like my kerbal space program or minecraft or something like that so mm-hmm. so but but like every game doesn't happen like that and like most games what they do is they sell a lot on launch and then mm-hmm. they sell a sell a lot on when their sales like in the middle there's not much movement there yeah right so so what was so what happened was that eventually like the money is dried up like and double fine like sort this and according to double fine they kept on going until they made, they were actually making a loss on this but but even after several sales and promotions it didn't pick up and mm-hmm. double fine is saying this that okay I, since it didn't pick up we will basically polish what we have now and that's the version 1.0 but okay. what the people are but the what the people who bought it are saying is that we bought it based on all these promises you made us mm-hmm. and like why should we care about whether like your game didn't make enough money or not because like for them like if you that's the problem with selling stuff in based on promises right yeah like i mean like all three of us are game devs so we can understand the reality that okay yeah a project isn't making money like you're making a loss better to cut it you know instead of like yeah, but yeah. i, I yeah. think uh Yeah, I agree that this isn't, you know, selling something on promises is inherently wrong. This is probably like a PR nightmare right now for Double Fine. Yeah. But I think it, uh, it, it, it does. You know, I was afraid this sort of thing would happen, and that's why I was asking because I, I had an inkling that this might have happened, but I was kind of hoping not. So, the way I see it right now is that, uh, like from Double Fine standpoint. they were yeah they're they're trying to make a good you know a game that they're passionate about and they were trying to say yes we'll you know they had expectations that didn't pan out um what's wrong is that they should have made that clear you know they should have been more upfront saying that these are our list of features and this is the you know no this the, was uh, yeah i mean like th- it was actually uh, like you know done like that as in like they were like these are the f- list of features we are thinking but the no, problem but is like 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 it's like a small asterisk you know conditions apply exactly that's what i'm yeah. saying that they should have just said, given a list they should have given a list and said okay this is what we're going to do first and this comes next basically given like a timeline for each or if not even a timeline at least a sort of uh like a list of priorities saying that these are what we're going to work on right now and this later because considering how open they were about what they were doing during the amnesia fortnite like there were live streams and like blog posts and like all kinds of no, crazy stuff yeah this was actually when um, you said yeah, like df9 what happened no go ahead no no what what they, what happened in df9 was that like updates eventually dried up like initially yeah. they were frequent then they were sort of like they missed a couple of weeks and then they were like okay yeah no we are doing something yeah we just like you know like aren't like we just missed the updates because we are like doing like we we are waiting for something substantial then we'll give you a big update all at once and like slowly Precisely. like you know the speed of updates dried up and like that happens with everything like like when you are at the start like there is like the code base is clean and everything is like you know but you can get features implemented quickly because you're not like you're like oh yeah like okay this crashes if i click this and this but that's okay i can fix it later so right. initially the speed is like higher and like ultimately i think like early access is only beneficial for projects which like which like which gain traction keep on gaining gaining traction over time otherwise yeah. and that's like by definition of like entertainment that's one person of the project there's a reason why like we we only like 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 we can only say like okay minecraft kerbal space program prison architect in the list of like early access yeah. games which have absolutely like taken off yeah especially if you're making a simulation and you wanted to do well in early access you can't launch with very few features like yeah. prison architect also did the same thing but prison architect when it launched it was it had a lot of stuff in it it was not just a bare bones game by any means you know There was a yeah. lot of stuff in Prison Architect, and there still is a lot of stuff in Prison Architect. It's a buggy game, but it's a fun simulation. Uh, yeah. DF DF Nine was never uh, an engaging simulation, and uh, the fact that I think they've said now that uh, 
they they want it to be a UGC game, which is like they want to rely on user generated content to take this game further. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit it's 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 a bit disheartening. I mean, I I like I mean we all understand there are realities in of game development that you have to deal with. You cannot keep sinking money into a project when it's losing money. Mm-hmm. But uh, you also like then you also need to have the good sense to not sell a project to people based on. Uh, yeah, based know, on promises. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. If if like, you're going yeah. early access, um, content is something that you know you can't set up a precedent in the beginning. Say, hey, we're going to talk to you so much, and this is what we've got right now, which is far less than what most are, er, other early access people have. But because we're talking to you, you believe in us, and then after you've set that expectation, kind of fall off of it. You're going to lose people, you know, like trust there. Oh. Also, like I mean, like it is the indie funds business whom they give money to, but I find it like to a, to me it is a little bit sad that the indie fund is like giving money to companies like Double Fine. They're a publisher at this point, you know. Uh, yeah, that's are, another thing actually. Like uh, Double Fine doesn't like fit neatly into the niche of you know either lone upstart developer or like big faceless corporation. So like everyone is con- conflicted. Are, like. You know, like they are a big level sized game developer who have been around for what like ten plus years at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like nobody. No, no, I mean, like the reaction. For example, like imagine if like this was like was something which EA had done. You know, like SimCity. So then nobody would be saying, "Oh yeah, realities of game development," because fuck EA. Like you know, like is a statement I wholeheartedly like support. So, to a large, to a large degree, the reason they can get over the, they yeah. can like double fine can shrug this off is because uh, of a the fact that they are located in San Francisco, which means they are good friends with a lot of like game journalists who are based in that city, and b Tim Schafer has the kind of reputation that can withstand almost anything. I would say, you know, uh, he can like, he he has a lot of goodwill built up because he's made some amazing games over the years. Yeah. So people will be always be willing to give him another chance. Mm. Yeah, but at uh, the same time, like, dude does have a history of sort of you know going over budget and like kind of, you know. Yeah, but like yeah. at the same time, he was not involved with this project, so yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, but like just, again, like if like if you if you, like you know it's the thing where like if if you are hailed for the victories, then you must also t- like you must also okay. accept accept when you uh, fucked up. Like uh, yeah. see, that's that's the thing which I think. Is is kind of disheartening. Like if if Double Fine would just own up and say, you know, I think we fucked up with this. That's mm. that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Like I'd be more than willing to give them a pass because they they keep consistently producing amazing games. Like I like the the I like Double Fine Adventure, uh, Broken Age. I enjoyed it for what it was, and I'm I'm looking forward to the second part. I'm sure they'll do a good job with it. You know. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, like one thing which I was actually uh, like thinking about with this early access stuff is that like the only game like games which I like all of these which you know like uh, like superstar early access games like uh, like all of them seem to have really micro sized teams like, as in like one or two people because like in that case even if one, if one month your game doesn't sell much you can like you just have like a bunch of money to fall back on. Like in Double Fine's case, like they they have like people who they must pay like top of the line salaries since like San Francisco yeah. is an expensive place to live. Yeah. So they must pay insane salaries to everyone for like every month they're working. So that makes the survival of the early access project that much more difficult. Yeah, the, like their overhead would be insane for this. I'm sure they've taken a pretty decent sized loss already, and I'm sure they tried their best to put this out there. Problem is when you like when you hype something like DF9 was hype, right? It was uh, huge. I remember yeah. when like it was first talked mm-hmm. about. It was all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, mean, like in this case, I'm just like sort of like you know split in the middle. I see like okay, I can see why the customers are hurt, and I wouldn't be be grudge if like somebody was wanted to ask for a refund, because like clearly like like there has like they haven't. Like you know, really delivered on the like emergence yeah. concept. So, yeah, they like they've kind of left it halfway, and it's understandable. Like I understand it on a business level, you have to just put your hands up sometimes and say, uh, you know, like we failed at this. But that, like that is my only contention here. They've not said we failed. They're trying to play this off as 
you know we kind of we kind of delivered right right we yeah that was basically it yeah they're saying like oh yeah we delivered you know like uh which which is which is the part that's kind of flicky uh yeah. like everything else is understandable uh at, you know i like i'm sure that they didn't like no, no one sets out to 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 screw everyone over like you know no yeah. one like especially a company like double fine they give a shit and like it sucks that they weren't able to manage this that's another thing that they do need, really need to sit down and take a long hard look at though their ability to to manage time and manage funding for their projects is is something that has hurt them time and again you know it's hurt them in the case of double fine adventure where oh, yeah, they had that was crazy over budget right yeah where they've only been able to make half the game with the money they got and they're depending on sales to make the second half and yeah. like that like that really sucks for a tim shafer game to like fall into that situation right for any game to fall into that situation when it's being made by people who really know what they're doing mm. yeah like yeah. it's fine Again, like it's yeah i mean it's also weird because like if when you were saying that okay we are hoping for like sales to what you are like it's it's a it's a thing where customers have are taking all of the risk for you you know yeah you know so, uh, yeah it sucks like i mean they really need to sit down and and iron those processes out and but but and it's weird because yeah i understand at a level there is no way you cannot budget for everything that happens in the course of development yeah. there's no way you can do that yeah. but i definitely think that with a company like double fine there is room for improvement in that department yeah they, they like, can't to 100% one, accuracy yeah but i think this is, yeah no definitely no but i think this is one case where actually like you know a private development process for the first few months would have helped because okay imagine yeah. if like it wasn't an amnesia fortnite project somebody at double fine would have internally pitched them and like come up with a prototype that was like the first released version of like the space based df9 i would definitely wager that even tim shafer would have played it and said this is in fun like i'm i can't feel this becoming a game so like in that case it would just have been quietly shelved and like none of this whole thing yeah. would have happened but, but was it was it one of the games that was ported by a double uh, by by amnesia fortnite or was it one of the games that they internally picked as a studio no no uh, this year they allowed uh, public voting voting right there was voting this year yeah, yeah. there was public voting yeah this so like i mean in that like that again that's a risk right that, that's not something i think like a studio like double fine i i don't want them to to friggin listen to what people want and make that i want them to make the games they want to make that studio's biggest strength is its personality you know yeah uh, they should make games that they friggin love and that they care about not games that people vote on man i mean whatever i mean whatever that no, this, like, this is uh, like this is a thing because see like if you give me the choice of voting between two games one of which is like the war for it in space other one is like a 2d platformer with like So like even though like 2D Metroidvania is infinitely more like achievable then yeah. you will vote for the space space dwarf fortress right yeah so so, so I mean, because it, like we yeah. gamers we're freaking nuts when it comes to that like you show us some yeah. weird ass ambitious concept and all of us will go yeah yeah we want the weird ass ambitious concept and in the end you'll get destiny <laughs> oh wow yeah is that the yeah. segue we're sick, going sick for here burn. yeah sick burn <laughs> no but uh, yeah like that's the thing like all sense goes out of the window when you involve like public voting especially with the like an average film buff knows that okay yeah you need a camera to shoot films and like actors need to be there and actors need to wear makeup and like special effects means computers and like yeah you know like the average film goer knows all of this stuff but like the average game consumer like games might as well as like descend f- come from mount doom yeah yeah game. they might like they might as well there there might be a magic box into which programmers whisper like sweet nothing and then the game comes out yeah uh, <laughs> wait, wait 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 guys that's not how we make a game no that's like yeah they just that's not how yeah. we make it. i mean everyone oh, knows that like to make a game you just like play, play, like play candy crush until the game power up comes up and then you just like Yeah, then you just like press that. the game power up yeah. button and then Candy Crush poops something out. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, like <laughs> put on Steam and it doesn't sell at all. Fucking shit. Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, like it's it's like yeah, like the the average con- game consumer really has no. I mean, I mean, 
even now look at the uh, look at like the steam top seller is this the top seller is like life is feudal your own an early access game that's a realistic medieval multiplayer sandbox with terraforming free preset and modular building construction crafting survival no target physics based combat and animal breeding and like original combat form and what and numerous other features i mean what the fuck like i mean look at the that, that's that's number 1 wasteland 2 is number 2 so i mean people will just pay for like promises like i mean i don't know maybe life for feudal your own is really like the best game that's ever been made in history no but, dude, like, is, but this happens yeah. again and again like i don't like people yeah. haven't learned their lesson with early access like there is some weird ass shit which is just taken over the market for a couple of days and then died because people have realized oh my god this sucks yeah uh, and i mean right when like the double fine stuff is in the news like so i mean i don't know what to do people are paying their own money i can't like stop people paying money so i mean yeah what yeah and it's, it's yeah. weird that daisy is still in the top 10 when the 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 daisy version that is currently out has less features than the mod yeah. that was out and i mean like, look at that really like, <laughs> look at the text of daisy it literally in all caps says warning this game is early access please do not purchase yeah. unless so and i mean still people will purchase and then go to complain on forums saying that like, like you know literally almost 90% of early access games should come with a line is sawari apne saman ki khud zimmewar hai matlab <laughs> yeah and i mean like even like for example games you know where it's like uh like you can like basically like just have a half featured game which like has only like 20% of the features of your like promised one and then just rake yeah. in the money and then say yeah okay your sales haven't Yeah, there was another game actually, Star Forge, which de- which like stopped development, like immediately went to 1.0 because like sales dried up. Anyone remember Star Forge? Like, yeah, I remember Star Forge. Yeah, I remember it a bit. Yeah, so I mean, like, clearly, like people, like, it's you know the funny thing is like the, I remember reading a like half serious comic where is it was like you know I don't know what I get the kick from these days like purchasing games on Steam or playing them. <laughs> I think it's almost like that like people get a kick from purchasing these kind of games and just imagining what is possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah. like it is but you know and and the other side of that is uh, is when uh people who are actually working on their early access game and doing good work on it consistently will put up an, an innocuous post like the Rust guy put up an innocuous post saying his company is diversifying and they're making two new IP. and everybody is like you've abandoned rust you're such a useless human being and you should die in fire yeah and when he's like you know we have a company of like 12 people or whatever and two people are working on new games respectively they're both working yeah. individually on new games the team of rust is still working on rust and people are still pissed off at him for that uh is it's, it's yeah. weird i we've come full circle <laughs> we're back to notch now yeah and i mean yeah i don't know how this will like it's like you want people to be more aware like ultimately a yeah, consumer awareness you like because early access is in completely doomed like there are enough good games like to that justify yeah. like early access but like rust is excellent rust yeah. is amazing uh the forest is is really really good too there are a lot of good early access games like the, the here is the big problem with what we're saying which is how do you get the audience to get more interested in in how the sausage is made and how we make uh, how we make video games like it's not as interesting as how we make movies largely because the film industry has one thing which the game industry has a huge dearth of which is the film industry has interesting personalities involved and personalities that people want to know more about you know the people no, that I make think, no, i think ultimately like uh, like this is just like a growing pains almost because i imagine like by the time gaming is like 200 years old or something most like, people will know how games work and so on no i don't i don't think it's that like people have always been interested behind the personalities that act in films and behind the personalities that make films yeah because you know? they're up front and center so they're when up you... front, like they're up front and center this is always going to be a problem with video <coughs> games with video games it's not about any <coughs> one individual personality it's about a team and you like it's very very rare that someone like tim shaper or sid meier or will write or shigeru miyamoto or hideo kojima can come in front and say like you know i am an author and like i've got the vision to do things on my own and i'm a freaking genius 
No, but isn't I, like the, that the direction we're kind of going in? Even with like you know people like Elfish and I such. I don't think who, so. I don't think so, man. Like, uh, no, I think they, we're headed, we're headed uh, in a direction where, it, like, a lot of these people who are currently coming out and being uh, like talking about personality and like trying to sell their game, like trying to come out with very forceful and unique personalities. I think because of the enormous backlash they're getting very quickly. Uh, uh we're going to like we're going to kind of go back into some kind of weird shell like no, I, but like, like i would okay, argue look at that Notch, uh, right look at Notch. he's an example of someone who had personality and has kind of left because no, he had like, i would argue that japan is doing this a lot better like for example like hideo kojima's very uh hideki kamiya and like i can probably name like four or five more if i like yeah would, yeah, yeah sure like yeah. Uh, shinji mikami so, uh, yeah, Asus exactly. Naba, uh, yeah. Keiji Nafune, like yeah. there are, and this guy called Shigeru Miyamoto. Probably never heard of him, but you know, <laughs> like uh, so. Yeah, like I, I think Japan is might actually like be doing this a lot better. I, but like, name the last time in in video games, please. Name the last time the West has tried to imitate Japan in the last fifteen years. Uh, John yes. Romero's Die Katana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like. Uh, he's making a new first person game by the way he's saying he's going to redefine first person games again uh, oh, I, like not uh, again not again what do you have again I'm, I'm looking forward to it like he's like it's all been about twitch shooting these last this years but i'm going to make a, a first person game that changes everything again uh, uh it, okay I, I'm, if sure. he has, I'm not yet. if like, he has a great game in him like i am Man, that that'd be insane to see what John Romero can produce now, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, like he definitely like has the talent. There's no doubt about that. Like so, yeah, like any no, any yeah. of the four eight guys, they're all freaking geniuses. Like Tom Hall, like I'd love to see him make sit down and Tom make Hall the game. Actually, thing. like it's fun funny part. Like Tom Hall actually like tried to do two Kickstarters about like some platformer thing, which like nobody yeah. backed because it was silly. And like it was that, a. Uh, he did. Yeah. He did that joint Kickstarter with Brenda Romero, uh, uh, which failed for an uh, RPG. That's uh, yeah. No, but like that. The funny thing was that would have actually got the goal. But like I have a rough feeling that like just getting the goal wouldn't have been enough for the game. Like they yeah, were planning it on like they it were be, like on, on getting double fine level of success. Uh, yeah, two hundred percent, like three hundred percent. That was like what they were planning. So that's why they cancelled it early. But yeah, anyway, like. Yeah, like his projects have been really like personality free, and like yeah. I am kind of like I've I've almost started to think that you know like instead of like all four double finds being geniuses, like they just sort of combined to become one genius, like <laughs> and now like all four of them are like you know like they're like the Beatles without like like individually not much you know like happened. Then uh, who's like, your favorite? But together they were the best. Oh my God! So you don't have to like. Yeah, like so <laughs> kind of shoot and that. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Have to, the shoe doesn't have to fit that that well. Yeah. Who's Yoko Ono, asshole? <laughs> yeah. Uh, John Carmack is Yoko Ono. Oh. He broke the band up. What do you want? Yeah, <laughs> he did. He did. He, he broke he, the he band went, up. He went to. Yeah, he went to VR and he's like hardcore into. It's not that. just that he he broke it up. Almost everyone, all of the core people who have left it have left it because John Carmack has kicked them out. Uh, like like John Romero and John Carmack are friends now, but I don't think he and Tom Hall are like even on talking terms anymore. Uh, this is, this yeah, is yeah, a fact. Like, yeah, like I don't know, like no, like, like let's not let's not discuss like yeah, internal yeah. politics. Yeah, let's yeah, yeah, whatever. Talk. Like uh, yeah. you, you know what? Here's a, here's here's a better way to put it. John Carmack is both John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and and ultimately, like yeah, like Carmack's thing was like sort of like in the middle, like sort of like or time almost passed him by, as in like his core expertise, like. Like Carmack was never a game designer. He was just like the best tech, and then like the game comes after. But then eventually, like we got to the point where processor power was so that like even programmers who could write 30% more inefficient code than Carmack would like would be like indistinguishable. So then like with the design, like look at Rage for example. Rage like is is basically like it's lacking personality. Is the best way to put it. So. 
Like, they I don't know. Use... I, I, I like Rage. It. I enjoyed Rage as well. I won't say it lacks personality. I think uh, it just at the it was marketed wrong. Like everybody was expecting, like you know, a fall, Fallout but more yes. shooter, and it wasn't. It was just a shooter. It was a good shooter. It was a fucking good shooter, but. And the the expectations were completely misaligned with what the damn game was, and that's why everyone was like so disenfranchised when it came out. Because people were expecting an RPG where they could go to towns and talk to people and with this deep conversation tree and shit. What what it was was a, like an open world where you could go around and shoot things and some amazingly designed encounters. Oh, like yeah. I swear to God, that that game still like. The last generation of games, the best shooting was in Rage, and that is like an underrated game for for what it was. Yeah, uh, I mean, it had some excellent. Uh, it just had some excellent moments. Uh, even the AI that they had for uh, some of those uh, enemy types were pretty good. You know, they yeah. kept you on your feet, uh, especially in the beginning. Yep. So uh, it was damn good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know. Like to me, it just like uh, lagged. Uh, like it was. It was like it was competent at what it did. Like the shooting was great, and like all the guns were good. And but yeah, like at the same time there was like that's I, not like, easy to do. <laughs> yeah, but like at the same time, like in this day and age, like it's not enough. Like because you sure. have lots of games with good shooting. You have lots of games with good graphics. Uh, and I, like, I don't know. Like I've all I I've, I, like, I like the Call of Duty games. I I don't think that in the in their single player campaigns any of them have had great shooting. Like that, like Rage is not a corridor shooter, and that's the most amusing thing about it. It has very, very tight mechanics, and it is not a corridor shooter. It is yeah. very, very well designed for what it is. Uh, but it's just that, yeah, you're right. It has very archaic uh, design. It like it, it did not meet. It did not have the total product. Of, like it did not meet the expectations that people had from it. I think that's the yeah. best way. To like people yeah, had then again like uh, like it it also had several uh, like you know uh, mechanics which didn't really fit the game for example the crafting stuff like there was some and then there was some like weird mini games type things <laughs> and then like w- the ending like or, or should i say like lack of one like yeah, so, yeah. I, i'll give it away the ending was really shitty but that aside i was fine with everything else same here. I was fine with everything else too. Uh, yeah, like yeah, to me it was just like it was well done, but like that's the best thing you can say about it. So, I mean I don't know. Like it just kind of like was lacking. Like it it's like a margarita kind of pizza, you know. You kind of you, if if there was just like one more topping on it, it would be a classic. But like what, wow. What, I, what I think we can what I think we can all agree on is that John Carmack is Yoko Ono and John Lennon. And on that <laughs> note, we're going to end. And whatever Wait, what about people Wasteland that listen 2? to us, like, they're going to hate us now. What about Wasteland 2? Like, I thought you were going Wasteland to... 2 is basically rage without all the cool first-person shooting stuff. And no, with some no, relatively no. decent RPG stuff, and it's pretty buggy and whatever. And you know what? When all of us have played at least 30 hours of it, we will do a Wasteland 2 podcast that we, oh. where we just talk about Wasteland 2. Uh, are we actually gonna play 30 hours of this? Am I going to play 30 hours of this? I don't know. It's a new game, they just so it might be hard for you to play. It. I know, I've right? Played, I've already played like 20 hours of it, so I'll probably like play 30 hours of it today. <laughs> uh, good for you, uh, uh, Arvind. That, uh, that's really healthy. Uh, I'm going to start playing Divinity: Original Sin, and uh, like when I get out, like play a, a bunch of Wasteland 2, we will do a Wasteland 2 podcast where. We discussed the shit out of that game. Uh, but I think everybody's a little bit too early into it right now. I am at least, and Tejas hasn't played it at all. So we can't really do a proper podcast about it. But yeah, we should we should probably end it here. Yeah. So, on that note, um, <laughs> good night, everybody. Uh, this was Tejas, uh, Arvind. Bye. And Vivek. See ya. Signing out. Good night, guys. Good night, gentlemen. Ha <laughs> ha.